What's up, what's up, what's up? Amazing Facebook Live. It's been a minute. Been out for a second. And I'm gonna make a quick one tonight because um, it's a little late. So we'll see who of all you amazing, beautiful beings is still wandering Facebook tonight. Uh, but I wanted to make um, a video tonight about manifesting. Kind of a redundant topic, um, but I have recently learned a few extra uh, elements to it. And so it's kind of the reason why I've been out of the loop and I started this wonderful Facebook Live kind of tap-in game. What's up, everybody? Hey, Emily, how are you, beautiful? Um, and then I, what I manifested all of a sudden totally started coming into my life very, very quickly, and then everything else had to stop. And so on top of sharing with you guys some of what, uh, what I was tracking my process with manifesting, I thought I would also take it to the tap-in game and see what other beautiful answers might be able to come and lend a little bit more light onto manifesting, since everybody's wondering how to do it, how to do it better, how to do it faster, and, and just overall kind of master manifesting. Um, so if that's a topic for you, um, and you're really, really wanting something in your life, let's play tap in. Um, and so if you haven't played tap in before, um, it's this really fun game that uh, I basically ask a question. So if you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments. And then I go to my fun array of a few specific books that I've picked out. And I basically just open up the book and then I ask the question and we see whatever comes through. So I have some really fun arrangements of books. Um, because usually the two things people want to manifest are either money or love, right? So we're going to go with Path of Love, and we're going to go with Secrets of a Millionaire Mind, and Power of Positive Thinking, the decision book, kind of always important in manifesting, don't you think? And then I have the Enchanted Map cards. So I'm going to play with all of these tonight, um, and just kind of see what comes up, but, um... The first uh, thing, as I was kind of just getting really present with everything, I, I opened up, I cheated, I started a little early, and I opened up Power of Positive Thinking, and I read a small little quote, um, and so I thought I would share that one with you right now, and it totally ties into everything when it comes to manifesting, and it's a little bit more than just positive thinking, but I'll read this, and I'll kind of explain, but basically what I was asking was, you know, how do we really tap into that energy of manifesting and really kind of get like a really solid foundation and, and sort of grip on it so that we can really feel like, like we can call that in whenever we want and call in whatever it is that we want when we want. So whether it's a relationship, whether it's a job, whether it's money, whatever it is, um, I'm asking the question about manifestation through the book of positive thinking. Um, and yes, I know everybody keeps saying whenever I hold this up because my camera's backwards, so obviously it's read backwards, so laugh if you want to. Um, so uh, when I opened this up, the first place that I went to, if you have the book, it's page 166. Um, and it said, it has been said that the wisest man who ever lived in America was Ralph Waldo Emerson, the sage of Concord. Emerson declared, a man is what he thinks about all day long. And I know we've heard that one like a thousand times, right? Like you are what your thoughts are, your thoughts manifest um, into reality and all that, right? There's a deep tendency in human nature to become precisely that which you habitually imagine yourself to be. Um, and I always think that it's, it's always such a good reminder because not a lot of us um, pay attention to what we're thinking, not a lot of us really take the time to sit there and listen. Are we saying something negative and kind of like, you know, sometimes like it feeds into the pain body when you just like sit there and like play out these like negative thoughts and negative emotions. And, you know, to a certain extent, it's kind of like picking a scab. And in a weird way, there's, um, there's an addiction to that. And if you're not careful, you can keep that um, kind of behavior and it starts to consume you and you get addicted to it. And then ultimately that vibration goes out and you attract the same thing, right? Most of us know this. 
Um, it has been said that thoughts are things and they actually possess dynamic power. Judged by the power they exercise, one can readily accept such as appraisal, uh, such an appraisal. You can actually think yourself into or out of a situation. Hey, Adam. Amazing hair. Thank you, darling. <laughs> I, had a, I had a hair pamper day. So, little, you know, by the amazing Tony, why not? Oh, my goodness. Amazing, man. Um, aren't you coming home soon, Adam? <laughs> What's up, Eric? Yes, negativity gains as much momentum as thinking the other way. 100%. But... That's the whole point is, are we in control of our thoughts and are we in control of our emotions? Do we have um, high emotional um, EQ, emotional intelligence? Um, and it's kind of like high IQ, but that's like more control over your thoughts as opposed to just control over your emotions and all those things, right? But yes, they always send out that vibration and then um, it, it brings you more of what you want. Um, and you can think yourself in and out of a situation. And it was funny because like literally just to share even like I was getting into such a wonderful momentum with making these Facebook lives. And then I hesitated even even pressing the live one tonight because I was like, we'll do it. Like just there was so much conversation going on about it and just anxiousness and being nervous. And then, oh, God, and what if I say blah, 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 blah. Right. Like all the junk that's in our head. And I was literally, I sat there and I was like, that's why I opened this up and that's why I cheated. Because I was like, okay, what is the book going to say with, with this whole situation? And literally I read, it was like, you are either going to think yourself into this situation or out of it. So that's why I love doing this game because it always, it, something always pertains. Whenever I choose specific books, there's always something specific that really pertains to exactly what's going on in that moment. Um, and then I was like, all right. Well, we're doing it, and then let's just share it with everybody. <laughs> so, uh, okay, you can think yourself in and out of a situation. You can make yourself ill with thoughts, and by the same token, you can make yourself well by, by the use of a different or healing type of thought. So, uh, what's that called? Placebo effect, I think, is one of the most powerful things in the whole universe, and scientists actually deem it now... They, they deem it like if, if they're doing a double blind study and someone has a placebo effect and it's more effective than the actual chemicals or drugs or whatever that they're giving someone, then they throw out the whole thing because they're like, well, we didn't actually give them a drug, but our minds are so incredibly powerful <laughs> that it can create a, a, a reaction the same as whatever drug everyone else is taking or whatever they think is going to happen, right? Um, what I want to say about that, though, is one thing that I really learned recently with manifesting um, is you are either, it's not just about what you're thinking, right? Because you could be having super positive intentions. You could be saying amazing incantations and, and, and repeating those and being really like, okay, this is what I'm going to say. And these are all the positive affirmations and da, da, da. And every single day I have that routine. And yet that's what, what you would think would be forward momentum. But then if your emotions about it are almost like not excited not matching the vibration of then the incantations or the thoughts that you're saying, then you're going to be going towards something and trying to, um, or I shouldn't say going towards something, your, your energy of what you want to manifest and what you want to bring towards you is going to almost have this like, ugh, kind of energy around it at the same time. And that's going to almost confuse the energy. And so it's not going to be as powerful. You're not going to get what you want as quick as you want it. You're not going to get um, what you want, maybe even as clear as you want it. And this really, really showed up for me when there was something that I really, really, really wanted, really wanted. And at that moment, it was frustrating me because, because I, couldn't, I couldn't have the ability to just get it right then and there. Um, and that sounds terrible. That sounds like you know, like, yes, we all want instant gratification. Right. And at the same time, I'll be honest, it had, it had one thing. It was a, it was a higher priced purchase and I was getting down on myself that 
that I wasn't in such an amazing, abundant flow that I could say, you know what, it doesn't matter what that price is, I want it and, and I wanna go after that right now. And it wasn't something so materialistic, you know, it was something that I felt really had a strong value to me and, and was, um, that meant a lot, that was gonna like fuel more of my progression. And so I was getting down on myself about that. And what ended up happening was I had to get rid of whatever the junk was that I was saying. The, the thing that I was going to do to try to talk myself out of it or um, what I was gonna tell myself um, to almost justify like not going after it. You know, like I, I, like I know we do, I know you guys all do this. Everybody does this, right? Nobody is exempt of like, you really, really want something. And then since you can't have it and, and it's so painful to feel like shit because you can't have it, that then you're going to make up whatever reason why it's okay that you can't have it rather than finding a way, getting rid of all the junk of whatever it is that you're telling yourself and then finding a way to actually make it happen and going towards it with forward momentum and not all the junk that's actually holding you back and kind of that ugh and making up excuses as to whatever it is. And in that moment, it shifted so much for me that I had a choice to make and I said, okay, I'm getting rid of all of this junk and I'm going forward with this 100% and I have no idea how I'm gonna make this happen and I'm just gonna make it happen. And there, like, there's, there's will that you have <laughs> and then there's scared out of your mind will that you have <laughs> and then there's just realizing that you can literally create anything and attract anything that you want if all of your energy is going into it. Not going into it with this, ugh, but I have to have it, or going into it with this like, oh God, I feel like shit, right? Like this um, contradictory energy. So if all of your energy is going forward momentum and like with will and determination and everything, then the universe will absolutely respond to that. Universe, God, sir, call it whatever you want to, you. And I, okay, pause. Um, I've heard of this happening and yet intention, yes, 100%. And it's more, Scott, it's, it's intention and it's the feeling behind the intention. So it's the thought, because thought or intention is thought. But like I said, an incantation could be a thought. If you don't have the feeling to match with that, then, then it's gonna be out of sync and contradictory. So it's intention and thought plus the feeling with it. Because if you're, like I said, if your feeling is like, ugh, then those are contradictory things. And you're trying to manifest something um, because you think that you should have it or whatever the thought is, right? Um, or thinking to try to get it and try to attract it as opposed to this feels really good and I'm excited and now I'm just, I'm on it and I'm just going after it with absolutely everything in my full will. And like I said, I, I had heard of this happening and I hadn't really fully experienced it for myself to this degree. Because I've experienced lots of different manifestations and not all of them were, um, you know, they were just kind of like, oh, let's think about this or let's get this, you know, or whatever. What's up, Clifford? I haven't seen you in like forever. Well, I haven't been on here in forever. <laughs> and, um, and so really just, just experiencing this with so much energy, put so much more passion and intention behind everything that I do. And like, I'm here to absolutely say that with all of that energy, I manifested exactly how to attain the thing that I wanted and get what I wanted. If I could give it a timeline, I'd say it was probably roughly like three weeks, like hands down three weeks. And I was already on my pathway. And <laughs> it's always funny because it's like, they always say like, be careful what you wish for, you know, because especially like if it's money related, like money doesn't just come on a nice silver platter as much as that would be awesome. Like a nice stack of like hundreds, that'd be great. Um, no, it gives you opportunities to, um, to create 
um, whatever that that amount is or whatever that is that you're going after and so literally like all of January and now all of February I just put in all of my dates into my calendar all of January I think I had probably three days off um, I attracted two more super amazing badass clients who are just as passionate about creating and getting to the next level um, as I am supporting them and getting them there and it's just the more that I attract inspiring clients then the more it inspires me to like work with them. that was just phenomenal um, and more work and abundance and then all of January is covered and I now have, oh my God, it's like eight days off. So yes, it took me away a little bit from, from doing the tap in game, which I'm, which it's so much fun. And so I'm going to do my best to, um, continue doing this because it's, it's a blast. Um, and it's fun. And my new motto for 2017 is follow the fun. And if it's not fun, don't do it because nobody wants that. Um, who's fun here? What's it? Balls to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's really funny about that, Eric, is um, 100%. And I was listening to, um, oh my God, um, Allie Brown, right? Businesswoman, right? I love listening to, to positive, motivational women entrepreneurs, men entrepreneurs, all that stuff to keep me motivated. Um, and she actually said that a lot of women, and I think this is probably true for, for guys too, but since she was a woman, she was saying a lot of women don't really get that like fire and that oomph until they're like balls to the wall and they're like up against a wall and they don't really have a way out and it's not comfortable. Women, we don't like not being comfortable, right? <laughs> and at the same time, that's when you get to create this like amazing motivation and out of that, we're all so, so, so powerful. And yes, we can think anything into existence and we can think ourselves out of it. But if you have the feeling to go with it, I mean, it's just, it's hands down. It makes, so, it makes everything so much more exciting. Exactly, rad, that's what I thought. And to actually like experience it, I wanna see who's on here. What's up, Paul? Um, what's up, Sonia? Okay, what's everybody saying? Clifford. Oh, I missed you too. <laughs> um, guess what's been happening today in multiple ways. My intuitiveness has found connectivity to my manifesting. <laughs> That's awesome. Connecting your intuitiveness to your manifestation. I think those are kind of like one and the same. <laughs> Absolutely. Because if you're following that that sync, when you know that you're in sync with something and you're not all in your head and it's not fear related and you're really fully in your heart um, and following that intuition, then everything is fluid. And manifestation can actually show up then at the same time. I always like to say be a yes person for what feels good and what feels right because if you start on a course, then it's easier to kind of get um, directed rather than it's like harder to actually start. So um, so that was kind of my story with that. And I want to open it up now um, for any more questions if anybody has about manifestation. Um, but I'm going to read from a couple other places um, just to see what other more information that we can get um, for manifesting because maybe there's other things that I miss. I don't know everything. Um, I want to, okay, so I want to do, um, I have money as love too. I want to do, since I'm talking about money right now, I want to do the secrets of the millionaire mind thing and see if, and so any of you guys, if you, do, if you don't know, um, if you're just tuning in, you don't know how this works, I ask a question. And so tonight's a question about manifestation and I'm using the book and I literally just hold it up, like hold it together and think of the question and then just open it wherever I have. There's no bookmarks in here. There's no nothing. And um, it kind of is just like one of those fun things where whatever the question is and then whatever the page is. That's the answer to technically this question. So this is in the chapter of the wealth files. Coincidence? I think not. Um, and we have a declaration, which is funny because we were also talking about incantations. So place your hands on your heart and say, <laughs> this is perfect. If you guys have this book, it's on page 85. And I'm not kidding. 
I know it's backwards, but I'm literally reading from here. So this is what I opened up to, and this is what ends up being the answer. And it's always such a fun coincidence. So place your hand on your heart. We can all do this together. Um, and say, I focus on opportunities over obstacles. I love that. I get ready, I fire, I aim. That's interesting. Rather than aiming and then fire. They fire and then aim. So that technically means they take action first and then course correct <laughs> with intuition. <laughs> That's what that says to me, which I think is actually kind of brilliant. Um, and now it says, touch your head and say, I have a millionaire mind. <laughs> I actually, it's really cheesy. I went to one of the millionaire mind events. That wasn't the cheesy part. Um, and I, I like doing this. I like putting incantations into my phone. I like putting them as alarms that go off every single day. Um, because even if I'm moving a mile a minute and, and I'm not taking the time to, which yes, I like to take the time and consciously look at it and consciously, you know, read what it says and be really present with that. And sometimes we're not always perfect. So even if that little alarm pops up on my phone and it says something like you have a millionaire mind or whatever my unique incantation is, then I know that my subconscious reads all of it and it, it starts reprogramming my subconscious um, neural pathways into releasing unhealthy thoughts and creating the new ones. So feel free to take that one on. It works really well. I really enjoy it. Haley, oh girl, where are you? Are you still in Australia? It's like a knowing rather than a wanting. Yes, 100%, your intuition. I don't know, I don't know what you were writing that comment to or from. Oh crap, where am I? Sorry guys, hang on. I'm like, namaste, hey Paul. I'm a Cancer sun sign and Leo rising. I'm Leo rising, awesome, badasses, moons, at first quarter moon in Aries, uh, with my moon sign as in, gonna go look at it. I don't know what that means. 183. <laughs> 183. Ronnie, are you the one that was baking up numbers last time? I don't remember it. I went off on this whole numbers tangent. <laughs> that was a fun one. Okay, staying on track. Um, millionaire mind game in actions. Uh, uh, or excuse me, millionaire mind actions. So this is, so whenever you have an incantation and then you have a feeling, right, to back up that incantation or uh, that manifestation, then obviously, um, for those of you that know sales, you guys know this one. But again, everything's always a good reminder. And for those of you that don't, have the intention, have the incantation, match the feeling with it, but then put it in, um, create three action steps that you're going to, uh, why is my connection weak? Okay. Um, put three action steps that you're going to take on to actually create that. So the fact that this is million mind actions, number one, get in the game, consider a situation or project you've wanted to start and then do it. Awesome. Um, I'm skipping a bunch of crap. Uh, practice optimism. Okay, we already got that one. Today, whenever anyone says that there's a problem or an obstacle, reframe it into an opportunity. That's always a really positive one. How many times do we hear something negative and then that attracts like, not attracts, um, that almost like triggers our negative mindset that's already like waiting to be operating from and then we want to like commiserate with theirs and we're like god you're right it really is negative isn't it rather than actually taking the moment to be a leader in that situation and say you know what what if we reframed it and we thought about it this way like as an option um number three focus on what you have not want to not what you don't have that's a huge one Make a list of 10 things that you are grateful for in your life <laughs> and read the list out loud. This is all stuff that's like, yes, I know some of us, we talk about it, but like, are we really doing it? How many times do you sit down and you really think like, God, I'm really grateful for this. I'm really, like something simple, like I am really grateful for my arms and legs. Because without which, it would be a lot more difficult. I'm just saying. 
<laughs> That's kind of a big thing. <laughs> I'm so grateful that I have a roof over my head. I'm so grateful that I have this like amazing opportunity to connect with beautiful, amazing beings like you. Like, what are we grateful for? Say what you want, not what you don't want, right? It's all about con uh, control and mastery over our minds and our emotions. Um, let's do the path of love. Let's see. Glad I have uh, water to anchor my fire. <laughs> anchor it or like create some steam. <laughs> my moon is in Aries and fire. Um, moon is in now. Oh, that's awesome. I like that. What's up, Brissel? Um, You would look really strange without arms and legs. I know, right? Wouldn't everybody? What if we were all walking around like that, though? Um, although, you know, like I've, I've seen some really amazing um, videos. Oh, God, I don't remember her name. It was such an inspiring video, though. Um, and she, there was this woman, and she didn't have... Um, I think it was one arm and she turned into this like amazing beautiful artist that she was painting with her foot and she was creating these just like beautiful pieces of art like talk about not letting whatever obstacles or perceived obstacles um, or then even like negative thoughts in her mind let her stop from creating something beautiful in the world and bringing amazing pieces of art like we're our own worst enemy and our own greatest champion at the same time. And yeah, reframe, reframe, always reframe. Um, and how quick are you to reframe? Like it gets harder and harder when you're around like more and more negative people who just want to like co commiserate and stuff like that, then it gets harder and harder to reframe things a lot faster, you know? So the quicker that you can pick up on something that's, that's not, um, that's not serving you, right? And I always, I pay attention, I'm really in tune with, with the body, and so I feel whenever it's something negative, it feels up here in the head. And whenever I feel like it's fun and it's something positive, then it's either in the heart or it's in my gut or it makes my body wanna like move. So if you ever feel like you don't know how to get in touch with that, then any time it feels up here in the head, chances are it's not always a positive. Um, and any time that then it starts feeling like it makes you want to like move or dance, like nobody's saying anything negative when you're dancing. You just, you can't. <laughs> so that could be an easy reframe too. Whenever some, you know, if you're, if you're thinking something negative, just start dancing. That sounds cheesy, but it gets the body into a different state. And that's the quickest way to actually reframe our thoughts is putting the body in a different state. If we're kind of like closed like this and our body feels very um, protective, then our thoughts are gonna be very protective and match what our behavior is. And so then even if you're opening and feeling more expansive, then it's like, okay, I feel like I can breathe and like, and now I'm allowing things to come in, you know? Um, do some like, do some exercise like this, or like work the back and like pull, pull everything back a little bit. Um, Okay, I have this to offer. Okay, this might, uh, I don't know, how do I read all of this, Clifford? Everything's written in like huge chunks. Um, so as science says recent shift has been happening in the universe and planetary alignment. Yes, yes, yes. We're, we've been in so many different planetary shifts. Like that's totally nothing really, totally new. Um, okay, if I, if I hit the button to try to read all that, then it keeps pausing the video. So I don't know how to do that, but um, I think it's funny because when I lived in Sedona, yes, everything was about, oh, there's a shift happening now and there's another shift happening. And yes, I believe that there's always planetary shifts happening a hundred percent. Um, and we then in turn have internal shifts happening constantly. So the more that mother earth shifts, the more that we shift and it's kind of like chicken or the egg, right? Like both are happening at the same time. Um, and it's the, it's the macro and the micro, right? So everything that's happening on a global, um, and on a universal is, is then happening on an internal, um, and a, and a micro within our minds and our emotions. Um, and we reflect both, right? And so I think that's what a lot of people, well, a lot of people, whatever, that's, when the conversation is how do we shift this um, world, 
how do we create more change? How do we create what we want and how it starts within us? It starts within the micro because that's the really, truly the only power that we have. And so the more that we take time to shift our internal and get quicker on the ball with reframing, then everything else shifts around us. We have huge emotional craziness going on with politics and everything else that I am not opening up that can of worms right now but we're seeing it happen on such a level that people are voicing so much anger and frustration. Um, and so what is that causing on a micro level? And how are we seeing that on a micro level um, affect our, or excuse me, on a macro level, how is that affecting our, our micro level at the same time? So I believe that there is always a shift happening there's never not a shift happening. <laughs> and the more that we wanna create change in the whole world, then yes, let's hope and pray that the more that we create micro, micro shifts, um, and, and let that be then the reflection that happens outside. We're the ones that are in control of it, not anybody else. And for every person that says um, that it's not their responsibility, um, isn't looking 100% at themselves and how they are one in the whole, in the whole cosmic understanding and web that we're all interwoven and our consciousness is interwoven together. And so we're, we all have a responsibility. And it's that one person that then is going to lead to then the many people doing the same thing. Um, and if it's not you, then who? I always take that. If it's not you, then who? Because it's so much easier to make the excuse to be like, oh, somebody else will do it. Somebody else will like master their thoughts. <laughs> somebody else will like figure out like their emotional, you know, mastery and, and not want to be like an asshole anymore. Like, um, it's, it's, it's going to sound like a judgment. I don't care. It's lazy behavior. That's just lazy behavior. Not wanting to understand yourself more and be so fully in tune with yourself that that you can, one, manifest anything that you want in the world, and two, be in alignment with everything happening, like, that to me is way more exciting. And it takes work. It's not, it's not lazy, right? Um, and yet at the same time, the benefits are so much more fun and exciting. <laughs> um, and if not now, then when? Exactly, Adam. Are you on your way home? Adam's my roommate. <laughs> Um, thank you, Eric. You're awesome too. Um, feel free. If you guys ever have any like, you know, questions that you want to ask me directly or whatever, please definitely feel free. Um, yes, I'm definitely going to be checking my messages more. I've been completely swamped this January. I'm super, like I said, I've, I've manifested amazing abundance, so I can't complain because <laughs> it's everything that I've asked for. And yet at the same time, it's really tightening up my schedule. Um, but yeah, I'm, I manifested what I, like, what I wanted to create, um, and then some. Um, I got two new clients out of it, too. Um, that was actually on my list, so that was fully intentional. Um, and so everything is just really coming together with, um, with just what I've manifested. So I'm wanting to share all that stuff. Ascension energy shifts. Ascension. I started, I love you, Sonia, and I, I started saying um, incension um, because as much as ascension and there's a whole conversation around um, ascension and activations and, you know, it's a more metaphysical conversation, um, which I definitely dive down that rabbit hole. I have done many times. <laughs> Um, I, I started shifting and um, I started uh, reframing, to be exact, with this conversation, um, incension, because technically the scientific definition of ascension is to turn matter into energy. So that's when we get to get reconnected with um, that kind of conscious level, um, that etheric energy, if you will, technically go back to spirit, go back to God. But then technically, um, on a scientific level, that means the death of the physical form, right? Because you have to take, it, it, ascension is going from physical to energetic or um, etheric. And so I have no desire to leave my physical body right now. <laughs> 
Um, I do every once in a while on the weekends <laughs> uh, when I go out of body, but I mean literally leaving this planet. Um, and so to me, it was more about looking within because the more that I can look within and the more that I can master myself and who I am and my emotions and all of um, my connection with myself, and then that creates a greater connection with um a stronger connection with other energies and other people because since we're all connected <laughs> then the more that we get to know ourselves then the more we actually get to know others and have compassion and all of those really wonderful great things too so yes Sonia hearts to you Emily um, thanks for establishing trust and then giving to giving the know-how well, it's awesome establishing trust. I don't know how I did that, but you're welcome. <laughs> um, James, how are you? I haven't talked to you in forever. I really needed this session. Oh, love you. Thank you. Anything helping with healing? Oh, honey, if you need to message me, let's do a breakthrough session. I will help you with that. Um, little shout out I I my my mission is with all of the tools that I continuously gain and, and educate myself on it's it's my hope to do the same for others so I mean you guys know that I do coaching you know that I focus on relationships with self and life and all of that stuff um, but I have opened up um, two hour breakthrough sessions with with people who are really like wanting to get to the next level and so if that's something that you want feel free to message me um, that's how I'm just trying to get Give us support. We're all starting 2017. We all have something to break through. We all have something we want to get to the next level. So whether it's something around life or fear or relationships um, that you just feel kind of stuck with and you just don't, it's like a wall and you don't know how to break through. Um, I have a really, really wonderful um, technique on, on how to do that and really creating resources. And it's, it's been helping a lot of people. <laughs> it's helped my, my two new clients. So, um, that's always fun. Uh, okay, I want to stay on track with making sure that I answer any more questions that are coming up. So, James, if you have a specific question around manifesting, and other than that, we can talk more about anything um, that you're you're wanting for like healing or anything like that. But I'm sending you super amazing energy um, for whatever you're going through right now. PM you later tonight. Okay, cool. Um, Eric. Straight up. We're very uh, aesthetic. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to do one more um, book on manifesting. Okay, one more and then plus a card because I like this enchanted map deck, which I think is my friends, but I need to get back to them. Um, and I want to do... I want to do one of Osho's, The Path of Love, um, related to um, manifesting... Uh, just because we've talked a lot about finances um, and maybe some of you are wanting to manifest a love into your life, maybe a new love or maybe getting that current love that you have to the next level and breaking through. We always have challenges and we always have plateaus, right? Like that's just how it goes. So how we can um, manifest uh, what we want more around love. And whatever that is for you. So again, I just do the same thing and I just kind of like open it however it goes. Uh, page 75. Home is not far away is the chapter. Uh, let's see. So the first place that I went to is says the hippie can cry, can laugh. He's eccentric, crazy, but better than the first. The first is political. The second is non-political. The first believes in war. I don't know what they're talking about yet. Um, the first is very articulate. The first type of... Okay. Okay, we don't know. We don't know what the first is yet. Um, okay, the first is political. The second is non-political. The first believes in war. The second starts with trusting and peace. The first accumulates things. The second starts loving persons. Uh, that's beautiful. The first believes in marriage. The second believes in love. The first lives a sheltered life. The second does not know where he will be tomorrow. But good, 
things have started moving. <laughs> they can move in a wrong direction, true, but they can move in a right direction, too. Movement is good, perception, right? Um, movement is good. Now the, now the right direction will be needed. One thing has happened. Now the direction... Oh, I read that twice. Uh, no, you read... Okay. Movement is good. Now the right direction will be needed. One thing has happened, now the right direction will be needed. Okay, so he wrote that twice. I'm not totally dyslexic. <laughs> the first is very worldly, believes in the bank balance and life insurance. The first is very greedy for power, money. The second does not believe in security. He trusts more than life insurance. He believes in love more than the security you will have in the bank balance. He is not money-minded. He does not hoard. He is not moral in the sense of the f in the sense that the first is moral, but he starts having a new sorts of morality. Okay, so what I'm getting So I always um when I talk to people about intuition uh you're, it, it's saying everything about like the first, um, usually your intuition is the first thing that comes up, right? Um, but for some reason in this sense, it's almost like to me, it feels like they're relating the first to being the mind and then the second being like the, the feeling, right? So everything that we've been talking about with manifesting is it's like, you can have the thought first, you can have the incantation first, you can have the intention first. Um, and that's money driven, right? Ego, want, money, uh, like get, um, all of that stuff. Um, and then the second part is the feeling that goes with it. And that's the motivator and that's the intuition. And that's the, like the part that yes, it, it wants the, the money part, but it doesn't care necessarily whether it has the money in the bank. It's, it's more like attracting it for the energy, uh, sense, if that kind of makes sense. Um, Aniga, can you tell us anything about alchemy? Well, what kind of alchemy? There's lots of different kinds of alchemy. <laughs> um, there's, yeah, so if you want to be specific, I can talk about alchemy. Um, but um, being an alchemist is the great dictator speech. Check it out. Awesome. I totally will. When I, when I turn this off, I think that link will come through. So thank you for that, Eric. Um, yeah, so I think um, what it's saying is, again, you have the mind and then you have your gut and your heart and your, your intention and your intuition. And so they go hand in hand. It's not one or the other. It's um, they're a relationship, right? So they're always working. So it doesn't mean, you know, only feel and don't think. And it doesn't mean only have ego and not follow your intuition at the same time. So to me, it's always creating a balance of both. And so in manifesting with relationships, you might want a relationship. And yet, what's the feeling space that you have? You know, do you need to clear something out from the past relationships? Um, do you need to detach some cords? Do you need to kind of like just get the space and let that um, really clear out from the last stuff and, and all those patterns and programs and whatever had you attracting whatever wasn't working in that relationship, right? Because we always attract a reflection of whatever our internal process is. And so getting super clear on that and then you can actually attract, um, consciously attract something specific and manifest something specific. But you got to clear out all the junk. It's like whether, whatever it is, it's almost like all the junk that we have in our mind is like this ball and chain and it's just weighing us down and we can't move very fast <laughs> with it. We're in these physical bodies, we can't move very fast with it anyway. Um, balance, yes, always. I'm a Libra, I'm like all about balance. Okay, um, Anika, is that, how you, is that how you say it, Anika? I like that. That's beautiful. Or Annika. Um, alchemy relating to connecting with the universe and its message and manifesting through its will or any kind you think is most important. Okay, so alchemy relating to connecting with the universe and its message and manifesting through its will. Okay. Um, so... 
So what's coming up for me to share with you right now is um, about, um, and, and you can tell me whether this answers your question or not. Um, uh, but the first thing that popped in, so I'm following my intuition here, um, is um, start looking up Anika. Anika. Awesome. Anika. Yes. Awesome. I love that. It's beautiful. Um, I think that means something too. I had a, a girlfriend who was named Anika. Um, okay, so um, if if you look up, um, there's um, centropy and entropy, right? Um, put it together and let it ride. <laughs> exactly. Um, so <laughs> that's your that's your fire and your water. <laughs> put it together and let it steam. Um, thanks, Eric. So Anika, um, okay, so if we have centropy and entropy, right? Those are two laws of the universe. Um, and centropy is uh, creative. It's, uh, let's see, it's backwards. So it's, cre whatever this is clockwise for you guys. <laughs> so centropy is creative energy, it's clockwise. It is um, how I was speaking before about like ascension being energy into matter. Centropy is, um, uh, centropy is energy into matter. It's, it's creative. So you're, you're building something, you're turning something from etheric nothing into something tangible, right? And so we get to create, we get to be creators of whatever it is that we want, whatever it is that we're building and that's centropy. And then there's something called entropy, which is the opposite, which could be related more towards, um, uh, that's what I was relating towards the word ascension, because that's, unraveling. Um, it's a counterclockwise rotation. It's a, um, a releasing energy. It's a matter into energy. And so with that, those are two laws of how the universe is always uh, creating and, and uncreating, right? So there's always a movement going towards something and creating, and then there's always a movement going out. And so whenever we want to bring something in, um, there's always a balance that has to happen, right? So something, it's like, uh, remember wax on and wax off? <laughs> Anybody who's like, oh, I don't know what the age range is, but karate kid, <laughs> I like dating myself for the 80s. Um, so it's like the wax on, wax off energy, right? Um, and so whenever uh, we are like the beings that stand in the center of this centropy and entropy, and when you can be the observer and watch how the universe is bringing things into your life and then what needs to then rotate out of your life in order to bring more things in. Um, and it's not a like you have to get rid of something in order to bring something in. It's an equal, um, it's an equal flow and an equal, um, it is kind of like alchemy, right? Because you have to, it's like mixing. So alchemy is like mixing things together, right? And so the more things that you bring in, you gotta like pull something out at the same time or release it or um, unravel it to ravel something over here. So it's a fluid motion, um, but that's one of the laws of the universe. And when you, like I said, when you can stand in the observer position and watch how that's happening and the things that you're allowing to come in what is it that you're willing to give up and let go of so the more things can come in? So if we're talking about then even negative thoughts, like if we don't get rid of our negative thoughts, then we're not going to attract the things that we want. Or the negative thoughts that we are using to attract are actually taking things out of our life, right? That we're talking about negatively. It's taking those things out. It's pushing those away. So it's all an energetic movement of if you want to bring something in, what negative things are you willing to release and give up in order to attract that energy, that centripetal energy in, and then vice versa, looking at the things that, that you're unraveling with your thoughts. These are just examples. Centropy and entropy happens in a thousand different ways. But what thoughts are you creating, um, or excuse me, what what thoughts are you thinking that are unraveling the creations that you want to bring in and create and manifest into the world? So I totally don't know if that answers your question or not, but that's what came up when you asked about alchemy. 
<laughs> related to the energy of the universe. <laughs> so, um, wax it. <laughs> wax on, wax off. Um, thank you. Awesome. That helps me realize a lot. Cool. Um, message me if you want. Um, if you have any other questions, um, and we can dive into maybe if there's something that you have that's a little bit more specific that you don't want to, you don't want to ask here. I'm always open to that because I know. I mean, this is like public Facebook Live. So if anybody like has anything that they want to ask me that maybe you don't want to put on the comment thread, then that's cool too. And whenever I do, I'm gonna make a little announcement before I go too. Um, and I'm gonna pull a card. Um, I always have my little list of questions that that people want to ask but they don't want to ask on these comment threads so if there's ever anything with the tap in game that you guys really just want to know whether it's about your life or the universe or whatever it is um that you would love for me to ask with within this environment and these books um i don't have to use your name but i always like getting other people's questions as well and so the ones that that people write in, then I get to ask them using kind of an array of books that I just intuitively pick up on um, that night. So, perfect, oops. Uh, the only constant is change. You know what's so awesome is, um, Eric, it's so badass that you say that, because I've had that quote um, in Latin um, that, that's going to be my next tattoo with a dragonfly because dragonflies always come around me and they always represent change in a positive. Um, and so I always uh, said, um, oh my God, what's the English version of the Latin? It was like everything changes and we change with it. And then I added in Latin um, for the better. And because I think that everything should be changing, but everything is technically always changing for us. Um, and for the better. So yes, the only constant is change. Um, and I believe that we can be part of that change and we can be that constant that creates change. We are always constant as well. So change is always constant and I guess no, we wouldn't be constant, not technically if we physically die. Our soul, on the other hand, if you believe that, which I do, is technically always constant. <laughs> so change and soul are the only two constants. Okay, so I'm gonna take one card for manifestation, and this will be the final answer for this. Interesting, okay. So we have, I always flip the other one. I always flip this one, and then I flip the bottom one. <laughs> Do you guys wanna know both? <laughs> So this is interesting, and I don't know what this deck is very much, so we're going to find out. Manifestation, this one is number 10, hang on, let me open this, what is it? Give me a second, sorry, bear with me, I don't know, this isn't brand new, my friend's deck, so, um, this is interesting. Because at first I thought this was kind of negative. <laughs> Phil! Phil's on. Hi, my love. <laughs> Honey, you and I need to make a video together. I keep watching your videos. Phil is an amazing spiritual um, guide and just beautiful soul and human being and, and offers spiritual guidance sessions and has a world of knowledge as well. So, Anika, you can always reach out to Phil as well. He's, he's very, very tapped in. Um, we have really super fun conversations about that. Um, when are we making our video together, by the way? Okay, so on this, so having to do with manifestation, right? I thought this was going to be a negative. I don't know if you guys can see this because it says actually rock bottom. <laughs> I thought that was terrible. Um, and it was upright. So according to this deck. Okay, so it's not, I don't think this is a negative, but like I said at first, um, I thought it was, it says rock bottom, and then it says surrender and acceptance are the keys to freedom. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. As difficult as it may be to accept, it seems that you have reached a point where you can go no further in the same manner in which you've been doing things. 
Perhaps you've hit a proverbial brick wall or experienced a deep sense of loss and don't know where to turn. The old way of doing things must be discarded fully in order to move onward and upward. A new direction and a new strategy are called for. The only way out is through surrender. Like that. Accept things as they are and admit that you have no idea what to do next. <laughs> That's sometimes really scary for people. <laughs> um, if you wait in that heartfelt moment of release, then a stairway will appear like magic and all manner of synchronicities will show you the way to higher ground. Can we get a fuck yeah for that? The rock bottom card is a sign that a miracle is about to occur, but only if you let go completely. So whenever you want to manifest and get too far in our head and then we have, an, we have a mental attachment to the outcome. That was the other thing with, with everything that I, that I was manifesting. I was like, I have no idea how I'm going to do this. I have no idea how I'm going to create this. And yet I'm just going to trust and put all of my energy and forward momentum into it. It's like, it's like spirit or energy, whatever you want to call it. It's like it laughs at the plan you're like oh i i'm gonna create a plan for this <laughs> and then spirit's like oh really <laughs> let's see how your plan goes <laughs> because we get into our heads and we think we put into a box of how we think the plan should go and then that messes up everything because then we have a perception on what we think as opposed to letting um different uh, intuitions or different guidance show up and course correct us because we're like, no, 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 it's supposed to be this way because the plan said this, right? And then that doesn't happen. So until you literally completely let go because the old way of doing something, old behaviors, old thought ways, all that junk hasn't been working. Um, and you have to let go. Hang on. Yes, I'm going to read the other one because because it says sacred pool. And I wanna read anything that says sacred pool. The world is a reflection of your thoughts and feelings. Right? That's not synchronistic to this whole conversation at all. The world is a reflection of your thoughts and feelings. Oh, and beliefs, hello. Embody the love you wish to see in the world. Embody, embody the love. Don't think about the love. Don't just, don't just think about the love, but embody the love. So create your incantations, but then feel it at the same time. Everything goes hand in hand. It is mind, body, spirit. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, when you look into the mirror, do you like what you see? The sacred pool asks that you focus on self-love and self-esteem. That, I think, everybody needs more self-love. We are all works in project. We are all works in progress. So a detached self-examination made with rigorous honesty is called for right now. Reflect on the sacred pool and be at peace with yourself. Can you see how far you've come and how magical your life is? That goes into like gratitude and everything like that. I think that's all. Yeah, your unique service to the world is not only needed, but celebrated. See the love within you and know that if you cast it upon the waters, it will return to you tenfold. Everybody has amazing, amazing gifts and everybody has something that they want to manifest. So set out to manifest it. Think about it. Feel it. Embody it. And then let it go and let spirit or the universe or people or whatever or your internal guidance system show up to lead you to wherever it is that you're supposed to go. And I always say follow the fun. That's like my whole motto now for 2017 is follow the fun. Follow the fun and what feels good. So on that note, I hope everybody has an amazing night and follow the fun.